Hey guys, Nicole Herrick DIY here with you. Today I'm going to show you how to make gusher pads. So uh, with this video, I will give you the full sort of rundown of how to actually make these, how to do variable cores, and you will also get a free printable pattern that you can print out and keep for yourself and make some templates. You're also very welcome to make these to sell um, online and that kind of thing in at market. So feel free to adjust this pattern as well to make it more comfortable for your own body or whomever you're making them for. And if you've never been here, hi, welcome. I'm Nicole Herrick DIY and I do all sorts of different things with DIY from sewing, fixing things, making things like upcycling furniture, all sorts of different creative things. So if that's something that you love watching, do consider subscribing. All right, so let's talk about what is a gusher pad. So sometimes these are also called faux chenille pads. And basically they have these slits in them all the way down and it's got frayed edges along the flannel outer layer. And this is what helps catch any fast flowing liquids, okay? On the inside, we have um, a core that is much more absorbent than our outer layer. So that helps draw the liquid through into the inner core to help dry up this layer faster. Um, and we'll go through like, what are the outer layers? What are the inner core layers? And what is the backing layer in the video? Now, if you wanna to skip to any certain section of this video at any time, please feel free to do so. You don't have to watch everything if you know all about kind of these and just want to get straight to the thing, just hover over the timeline bar and you will see the different chapters that you can skip to. So I'm going to have some instructions on how to print your pattern at the end of the video, just because um, we have different paper sizes, but it's set up to work with both letter and A4 or pretty much any paper size. And I'll just give you those sort of basic instructions just so that you make sure it's printed to scale and everything. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about our different layers that we have here. So for my topper layer, I like to use cotton flannel um, and I've got three layers of the cotton flannel in here. And the reason cotton flannel is my choice for top layers is because it is absorbent and it absorbs really fast, but it's not quite as absorbent overall as the inner core layer. Okay, so what that does is it draws the moisture through into the inner core, leaving this more dry. Because if both the top layer and the middle layer are the same absorbency, you're generally going to end up with some wetness still feeling on the top layer here, which is not what you want. Now with the core layer, I like to use bamboo French cherry, okay? I've done experiments with lots and lots of different absorbency fabrics um, and tested them with things like, you know, the body warmth and compression and things like that. So I have done a fairly extensive research myself on what kind of fabrics are available and which work the best. I find that the French Terry, great absorbency, it's really nice and soft. It doesn't go too hard when it gets wet, which is what I find bamboo fleece does. Um, it also isn't very thick, so it's sort of nice and a bit more compressed than the fleece. And obviously being bamboo, it is a beautiful fabric. It um, keeps you feeling a little bit cooler than some other fabrics might be. Um, it won't give you a cooling effect, but bamboo is a little bit more cooling than cotton. And also having antibacterial properties, bamboo makes a fantastic fabric, okay? Um, on the back, I use PU fabric. So on one side, it is this matte finish, and on the other side, it is shiny, and that is the waterproof side of the fabric. So anything that's coming through here is going to never, never, ever come out onto underwear or anything else because it is completely waterproof. Now, if you wanna use different core layers and different upper fabrics, totally fine. You know, you got to work, do what works for you. If you've got different experiences, that is totally fine. These are just my recommendations for topper, core, and backing fabrics. So with these gusher pads, you can vary the, the amount of cords that you have inside them. So um, these are a multi-use kind of pad. So predominantly, it's all about making sure that um, all of the flow is captured into these ridges to stop it sort of spreading outwards. It, 
captures it all, feeds it into your inner core. So if you want something like a thinner pad just for like light bladder leakage or um, if you're sort of a more of a regular flow kind of girl and you just want an overnight pad that you feel is really going to protect you from any leaks, um, I've made this really, really long so that if you want to sleep on your stomach or on your back, you're not going to be worried about anything sort of flowing too far upwards or too far back. Two layers, which is actually what this particular pad is. It's two layers of the bamboo inner core. Um, so this is great for just regular gushes. Um, and if you have a little bit more heavy of bladder leakage, that kind of thing, then you've got your three and four layers. And these are great for the heavier gushes. Um, and also you can use these as post postpartum pads and obviously with postpartum everyone is completely different so you might just need one layer you might need four layers that's completely whatever works for your body all right are you ready let's get in to sewing this gusher pad after you've printed out your pattern i want you to cut them out and put them onto cardboard so that they're easy to trace around you'll have a wing an inner core and a stitch guideline each of the pattern pieces tell you how many layers to cut of which fabrics being such small pattern pieces, it's much easier to just trace around each template. Also, it's really crucial that you wash and dry each fabric three times before cutting out anything because without those three times washing and drying, you won't have much absorbency in the fabrics. It's also important to iron the fabrics prior to cutting out to make sure you get really accurate pieces. So here are all my pieces cut out. I have one top layer and the flannel two inner core layers of the flannel, two inner core layers of bamboo French terry. And just to mention, uh, it usually doesn't look gray when you buy bamboo French terry. It's usually this creamy color. Um, I just happened to dye this one. And you'll have one full layer of the PU fabric. Now you'll notice that I haven't trimmed this to the actual line. I've left a bit of extra. That's because this fabric is a little bit fiddly and I just find it's easier to just leave a little bit all around it. So we're going to start with the topper layers in the flannel. So line up your two inner core flannel pieces, make sure they're really well aligned. And then we're going to flip over our top piece and lay these inner core pieces on the back. Now these will be a little bit smaller than your topper. So just make sure they're equidistant all the way around. Next, we're going to grab our stitch guideline. Now, you don't have to use this stitch guideline. Um, this is just a little template that I made up. If you're really comfortable just eyeballing and just drawing your lines on um, in equidistant spaces, totally go for it. You can then pin your pieces in three places and let's head to the sewing machine. A walking foot is really essential when you're working with something with lots and lots of layers. If you don't already have a walking foot, please buy one for yourself. They're a life changer and they're only about $10 to $20 depending on where you live. We're going to start by stitching these two smaller pieces on around the edge of them. Now you want to do this by giving yourself a one centimeter allowance from the edge of the bigger piece. Obviously avoiding the wings though. Now you will see in this clip that I do have a line drawn in pen. Just ignore that line, it was a mistake. You wanna use your edge of the larger piece of fabric as a guide. So now we're going to stitch along those angled lines that we drew. So we're gonna start from one side of the outer stitch loop and then go to the other side. Now, if you wanna do it neatly, you can um, do a little back stitch, lift up, and then go to the next line and start stitching. But I don't really care too much about uh, being super neat. So I actually just continue along that outer loop and come to my next line, leaving the needle in, lifting the foot and spinning and going onto my next line all the way across and then continue that zigzag all the way down the pad. This is your reminder to subscribe if you haven't already just click this button down in the right hand corner and here is what that will look like as you finish that section so now we're going to cut slits all the way down the top of layers so we're going to do it through all three layers and we're doing it in between in the center of all of these stitch lines so i like to use my seam ripper just to start off my little line but I tend to, if I use a seam ripper to do the full line, it tends to not go very straight. So seam ripper to do a first little slit where you can get your scissors in and then use your scissors to cut all the way, not quite to the other end. And then this is how it should be looking. 
Next up, I'm going to overlock any of my several layers of the bamboo French terry together, um, even if you've only got one. Now, this is because it tends to roll at the edges after you wash it. And now we're going to join these inner core pieces on to the inside of the back of our front topper pieces. So you want to line it up really carefully, once again, making sure that if it's stretched a little bit, just kind of unstretch it a little bit uh, <laughs> if you know what I mean so make sure that it's not um, going too far out towards the edges it should look the exact same size as those other two final layers that are the smaller size pin that on and now we're going to turn our piece over and we're going to stitch all the way along this original loop that we stitched bum, bum, ba, ba, dum, bum. couldn't work out a piece of music to entertain you right here all right, so now we are going to grab the PU layer and you're going to put the dull side facing up and you'll see here why I actually added a little bit more allowance than originally drawn. It just never ends up being the exact right size once you've sort of sewn all the other layers together. So just give yourself that little bit of extra allowance. Now we're going to pin it around the edges, but only sort of a very small amount from the actual edge because we don't want to pierce holes into any of the sort of inner center pieces of the fabric. Um, if you have those little clips or any sort of mini bulldog clips, they're even better. And now we're going to join those two pieces by stitching just five mil or quarter of an inch from the edge of that flannel piece. Now take your time with this because you've got the shiny side facing down the bottom. It can be a little bit sticky. So just take it slow. If you get stuck or run off the edge, just stop, go back a little bit and restart your line. And now we're just going to quickly cut off the excess of any fabric up to that line. Just go as close as you can without actually cutting into the line. I'm using pinking shears, but you can certainly just use a regular pair of fabric scissors. And now we're going to turn the whole piece inside out. And it will feel a little bit funny because there will be little strips that you can feel from the top layer. So if you're feeling cut strips, just remember that there are cut strips on the front. It's okay, you haven't sort of snipped off anything that you weren't supposed to. Now to get all of the edges out without having to poke something inside, here's the little trick that my mum taught me. You just need to roll the edges between your fingertips and this helps bring those edges to the very edge and it will flatten them with the warmth of your fingers as well. And now we're going to top stitch all the way around the edge. So we need to tuck in the part that we hadn't stitched to allow us to turn us inside out. So we're going to tuck that in and then start with that section. And we're just going to go one to two mils or an eighth of an inch from the very edge. And this will just make everything sit really nice and flat and professional looking. And this is what we're looking like with our top stitching done. It looks very nice and flat. We've only got one stitch line on the back side. Now we need to pop on some snaps so that we can close these around the gusset of underwear. I like to use these stitch on snap fasteners. These ones are in clear. You can get them in different colors as well. You can also get um, these other ones that you use a machine to press on. You can also get metal ones that you hammer on. These are just easy for me. I don't have um, any machines and I find the metal ones a little bit more bulky. So these ones are really tiny and uh, just take a quick couple of minutes to stitch on. To get the edges of our slits to fluff up, you will need to pop these in the washing machine and either line dry or you can actually pop them in the dryer if you have a medium setting on your dryer. If you don't have a medium setting, I wouldn't do it in the dryer. So you can see that the edges where it clips over onto the gusset is really nice and thin fabric and then it's only the more thick in the center. These pads are soft, they are comfortable, they are reasonably thin for the amount of absorbency that they have and there's no chemically paper that is on your bits. <laughs> To download my free pattern, all you need to do is go to the description by pressing this little arrow under the video and you will see a link to the PDF that you can download. Once downloaded, you can open up the file and you can see that it looks like this. It is two pages and what you need to do is go to print and 
choose the page setup first. So you'll either choose A4 or letter or something else, depending if your country has a different usual paper size. And then we're going to go and make sure that we are on actual size or do not scale or 100% scale. Sometimes it is um, worded differently, but you need to make sure it is 100% scale or true to size. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this helpful, I would really appreciate it if you would pop a comment down below. It really helps my channel um, and liking also helps. You can also share this on social media with some friends, uh, share it on TikTok, share it wherever you'd like. Um, and also if you've created your own and you've taken some photos and you want to share them with me, please feel free. I am at Nicole Herrick DIY on the socials of TikTok. Facebook and Instagram. So do feel free to share them with me. I absolutely love seeing what you've created and your interpretation of my initial tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Consider subscribing. Bye.